Hello, let's, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. Hello, hello, can you hear me? We're going to get started. <laughs> it's 4 o'clock. Well, I'm delighted to see everybody here today, and I know we have just a few newcomers, so before I introduce our speaker, I want to just um, do a shout out to a, a few people that are important that you know. Um, in the back of the room is Vicki Shirley. She's the director of our wonderful oh. library. And um, also in the back of the room is Tim Carroll, and he is the sponsor of our local history room. Nice. Tim. And just in front of Tim is Tom Deluge, who is the president of our local historical society. And they're going to have a meeting right after this, so if you feel like sticking around and learning more about that, that's the man to see. And in case you don't know me, I'm Mary Morgan. I'm a librarian here. I'm also the local history librarian here at um, the Peninsula Library. We have a local history room. So without further ado, it was a fortunate day for me about two years ago when I stumbled upon a post on Facebook by some guy from the Traverse City Lake Ann area who calls himself the Up North Memories Guy. He was posting about old postcards he had in his possession, and in true archival fashion, I filed his contact information away uh, for some day when I might want to reach out to him. Tim Carroll bequeathed me some old postcards. I sorted through them and kept what I wanted for our collection, but then I had quite a few that I was looking for a buyer. I reached out to Don, and he agreed to come to PCL and review what I had. Um, and luckily he bought those. But even more exciting, he agreed to bring postcards that were pertinent to Old Mission for us to see, and now many of those cards are in our collection. It's really enhanced our collection. And we've been staying in touch ever since. From the first time we met and I heard him talk about postcards, I knew we had to get Don to do a talk for us. And every time I asked him, would you be willing to do a talk, he says, Mary, lots of people have asked me, They've, uh, I've always said no. But, uh, any of you know me, my persistence, <laughs> we now have Don here to talk to us, and I'm so excited. Um, he brings a wealth of information to share, as he's been collecting Michigan and U.S. postcards, and historically significant photographic media of all types for over 35 years. His collection is large and varied, and it covers images from the 1850s to 1960s. He loves to look into the Carter image and select interesting things that help to tell the story about the image. I had a preview of his presentation last week, and he definitely has a gift for making the photograph come to life. His wife, Karen, is here with us as well, and we're happy to have you both. So without further ado, here is Don Harrison. Well, because I'm in the middle of the room, um, my back to you is uh, not intentional, but uh, we've, I've got some really great stuff to show you. Um, so to begin, I'd like to thank the library um, for twisting my arm to put this presentation together for you. Um, it's really been sort of a labor of love. People have been asking me for many years to uh, as Mary said, to put something like this together, but frankly, I spend so much of my time researching um, high-quality photography that that takes up the majority of the free time that I have, beyond being a husband and a grandfather and a, and a friend. So um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, um, you know, just tell you a little bit about how I started I grew up in a uh, very small family, and things were always somewhat special. Didn't have a lot of relatives, so when, when there was a memory that was made, um, more often than not, something went in a little kid's treasure box. And that treasure box actually continued to grow through adulthood and college and my work career. Uh, I was a career manager at a large industrial mechanical supply uh, company. Uh, before uh, having a career change and moving to northern Michigan about 15 years ago. We live in Lake Ann, and um, I uh, am considered to be a Michigan historian and a professional postcard and historic, uh, historical photographic uh, expert. And uh, 
So the purpose of this uh, presentation today is to sort of get you excited about the things that get me excited. So to start, yeah, to start, oh, come on, oh, I know why. To start, this is the, considered to be the first postcard. It wasn't classified as a postcard, but it was put together by an illustrator in uh, 1840. In, in, well, it wasn't Great Britain at that time, it was England, and printed in Saxony. And what, this is actually a joke that the illustrator uh, created to send through the British postal system. And what those figures reflect are all postal clerks. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the, the, the humor in it was that uh, while, he, you know, while he was creating this extra work for the postal clerks, um, you know, they, they were actually the butt end of, of the joke, <laughs> using those big pens to hand cancel correspondence. <laughs> Now, this was my Halloween outfit from last year. I was a walking, talking postcard. Uh, we've really had a lot of fun with this. So, um, one of the benefits of uh, being involved in the kinds of things that I'm involved with is I deal with some wonderful people. But I also deal with libraries, I deal with media companies, government entities, um, people that are looking for artwork or, or uh, some type of illustration of a past event. I've worked with the uh, Department of Natural Resources on uh, lake levels. Uh, I've had artwork that showed a tree that still exists on a shoreline. And that people, you know, uh, may be suing uh, someone for repairing, repairing, is it? Rights mm -hmm. at the water line. And uh, uh, this happened to be a little benefit that I had um, when I worked with the History Channel. Uh, they actually gave me a bit part in one of their series. No. <laughs> so I, uh, I got an opportunity to be dressed by Hollywood as a, a lighthouse keeper and uh, had about 15 seconds of fame here. <laughs> I, I can't help that. Uh, I'm not going to hold it. Photographic excellence. Okay. Um, these are the kinds of things that I look for. This happens to be a family uh, from Hart, Michigan, going back to the turn of the last century. I mean, those clear eyes that, you know, that, um, uh, I don't know, things like this speak to me, I guess. Maps, okay, postcard maps. Uh, they were really popular early on, and when you really look at these things, it's got ghost towns and camps that are listed that have been, you know, uh, long gone. Um, if you actually looked into um, some of these map cards, you could see, well, Mapleton is listed, but you can actually see the ghost town of Archie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, I mean, the, the thing that, that spins my wheel is looking into these views, whether it's a downtown view, whether it's on a map, and trying to find something of interest to help tell the story about that particular image. You know, this is an aerial view, but it's an aerial view before there was an airplane. <laughs> you know, so someone, so, you know, someone, you know, took a look at this, and you know, you'll see there's an Acme ghost town of uh, what Argosa, I think it is. Argosa. And, and a number of other interesting places. Uh, Trevor City was blessed with a photographer, um, a number of different <laughs> photographers that um, uh, were very prolific. Uh, uh, Orson Peck was one of them. Uh, Charles Herbert was another one. You'll see some of their work. 
These are early Michigan postcards. So uh, this was postmarked 1901, but produced in 1899. So they're beautiful. They're <laughs> illustrations. They tell the story of Chief Petoskey, but also the you know the days of the railroad, the days of the steamer excursion ferry. And that was probably a new Yeah. Um, a few things from right here, okay? Here you've got a bunch of Native American um, uh, agricultural workers. 1928, there's a message on it, cherry pickers. I uh, um, actually can't read it from where I'm at, but... Um, Indians are ready to go to work. So, I mean, these are the kind of things. I, I love this shot. This happens to be from the Pussing uh, Farm. And uh, uh, this young lady uh, was Emily. That's her brother. And, and her dog was uh, also named. The dog's name was Laddie. These are different, you know, people and different scenes from right here in, in uh -huh. Bowers Harbor and Mapleton and Old Mission. Um, these gals just got off a small ferry called the Mary uh, Rose. There's some uh, Old Mission baseball players. Wish I knew their names, but unfortunately I don't. Um, you know, this young couple, um, uh, you know, picking cherries. And it, it had, I wish I would have written it down, but it, it, it had, a, had a great handwritten title on the back side of the card about, uh, about family. About anyway. family that comes together? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So more, more scenes like this. And, you know, this is all part of our heritage. That's Bert Krupa. <laughs> love the love interior shots. Okay, uh, I have a lot more content than time, so I'm going to have to whiz through a few things, and um, I think you'll appreciate where I'm coming from. So we're going to start out with parade cards. Everybody loves a parade, but when you look at this parade, uh, you know, of course, it's difficult to see in this large view, but you know, somebody's going to notice that the gentleman on the left in the, towards the front of the cart mm -hmm. has one leg. Mm -hmm. He could have been a Civil War veteran. Mm -hmm. So it depends, you know, when you look into these carts, you can see a wide variety of things that you hadn't really thought of. This is the Peace Parade in Cadillac, the end of World War I. Um, this is a parade shot from uh, Sheboygan. What I like about it is that it was taken by J.R. Johnson, and if you notice, it's right outside his studio. So I mean, these are the kinds of things that, as a professional, I look for and try and share with the world. Um, some great shots from Frankfurt. This happens to be a Ford parade. Uh, Henry Ford brought a bunch of Fords up on a tour. Everybody needs a Ford, so, so anyway, they, uh, they, they made a circuit of different towns around northern Michigan. I thought this was a cute one from Grayling. Sort of an interesting shot from New Era, which is uh, sort of south central here in Michigan. Uh, a regatta day in, in Eldon. It's not a real photo, it's a colored card, but it's a great one. <laughs> Something colorful. <laughs> These are very popular. This is the, uh, the, you know, people want to know how much value there is in different things. And this happens to be the, uh, the highest selling card that I've ever sold. Uh, it was sold probably 12, 15 years ago. I think I listed it on eBay for $35. Uh, 
and it sold for 450. Oh, wow. it's, it's, it, and it got bid up and bid up and bid up. It's a hockey card, but you know those darn Canadians. <laughs> so it, it went. You know, this happened to be the very first professional uh, hockey team in the history of the, you know, of, of North America. So um, that is the exception. The rule is. Five bucks. <laughs> so, at any rate, uh, here's a nice postcard shot from uh, downtown Petoskey. Uh, and we got a little carried away. Um, you know, just nice, scenic, colorful, these are called white border cards, celebrating our community. This guy, I'm not sure what he ran into, but he ran into it in Trevor City. <laughs> Um, here's a, a, a colorful advertising card for architectural finishes. Okay, now we're getting into asylums. You know, you wouldn't think of asylums as something that people typically would collect, but people do collect asylums and disaster cards and shipwrecks and train wrecks because it is actually part of our history. Uh, this is a wonderful card of these young boys. Uh, this is a tragic story, though, of the Beulah home in Boyne City. Uh, these young men were, uh, young boys, were terribly uh, physically and emotionally abused. And it's, you know, not a, it's not a story for the faint of heart. But um, it is part of our history. <laughs> so, you know, different hospitals, including, of course, the uh, hospital we have here in Trevor City. There's uh, the old cottage number 31, which probably has not been around for, you know, many, many decades now. Um, something a little more upbeat and colorful. Everybody loves automobiles. Um, these are called color chrome postcards, and they're very popular with people that collect, uh, you know, colorful printed postcards of like all types. These are all Michigan cards, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you all know that one. <laughs> Uh, this is a view taken by my good departed friend, Phil Ballier. Did anyone know Phil? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Phil and I were, uh, were, were dear friends, and um, uh, I'm a, a big follower of Phil's work from the 50s and 60s. Okay. Yeah, well, actually, Frankfurt, and uh, you'll notice right in the middle there's uh, Baker's Bar. That uh, used to be sort of an infamous uh, place to go in, in Frankfurt. A lot of the sailors, uh, uh, off, you know, off the car ferries were uh, known to rumble there a little bit. Is it dingy, so? Uh, yes. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Okay, um, some higher quality cards. Um, these are real photos. Um, you know, this would be a, a, a sideshow event um, at a community function. Here's that full uh, view of the uh, heart card. Um, this uh, is Lexington, Michigan. Uh, a bunch of uh, uh, men and women that work at a woolen mill. Oh. What? What year did they go from having that little space at the bottom to write to having the writing on the reverse? Uh, that's a good question. We'll take a take a quick break here on that and um, get about postcards initially because postcards could be sent for a penny, whereas a letter could be sent for two cents. So I mean, they're always looking to you know to get that that tax, you might say. Um, just something else on usage, uh, uh, it says um, in uh, uh, 1908 there were 
667 million de uh, postcards sent, approximately. Mm -hmm. By 1913, the country was sending over a billion. Wow. So, but that was like the golden age of postcards. It lasted for a short period of time. Postcards still are produced today, but there was this massive surge towards using that as correspondence. Uh, okay. So we don't know who the bathing beauty is. Her last name's Nichols, I think. Is it? Uh-huh, Rita Nichols' sister. Okay. Phil Bailey is, isn't it? Uh, Mike Mary. Nichols' sister. Okay. Mike Nichols, who does the Woody Station race. Yeah. Is that advancing? Yeah, it's not advancing. <laughs> should ever travel to Bhutan, uh, which is north in the Himalayas, you can go to a, sh a post office in the capital city and have your face put on a legitimate stamp. And you can put that on a postcard and send it home. And I did that when I was there a few years ago. And everybody I asked, what did you think of the stamp? They hadn't looked at it and had thrown it out. Oh. <laughs> you still get your face on the stamp. Well, as long as we had to take that break, um, can I see a show of hands? Uh, how many people here are involved in the um, in the Old Mission Historical Society? Okay. Um, is there Grand Travers? That's what I was going to ask next. Is there anybody else that's involved in the Grand Travers? Well, Travers. Yeah. T H S. Which is the same as the museum. No museum? No. But I know there's no museum, but the same organization. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Um, how many people here uh, have a Facebook account? Not that it's critical, but it's a, it's a wonderful way to be able to share this kind of, uh, you know, this kind, these kind of treasures. Anyway. Okay, well, uh, back to it. Um, <coughs> You know, these are local views that you might know. You know, of course, there's the, the uh, mouth of the Platte, in West Platte Bay, you know, the cherry bucket. Um, actually, um, there are some of these postcards on the uh, corner of that uh, unit over there with my contact information on it, if you care to take one. Um, of course, we all know that. You know, I always love this image. Yeah. Those were fun days and love the color in the card. Interior and exterior of the old steakhouse. That might bring back some memories. Um, railroad days. Now we're gonna whiz through the disasters, but there's, you know, disasters could be tornadoes or cyclones. Uh, this happens to be the tragedy down in Bath. Uh, the uh, gentleman uh, blew a grade school up, unfortunately. 
that's a long story, unfortunately. Um, you know, fires, you know, buildings used to be made out of wood and, and there were an awful lot of fire disasters and floods before dams. Lumber yards and lumber works. This is actually a, uh, well, I, would, I think it's sort of funny, but unfortunately the building burned, but it's actually a hotel fire that is immediately next door, if you just look on the left, to the fire station. <laughs> so that's in Boyne City. Of course, lot, <clears throat> lots of boat traffic. Oh, this is the Mets fire. Um, uh, oh, these yeah. these four, four folks up in uh, northeastern Michigan tried to escape a fire on a train, but unfortunately the train drove right into the fire, and the oh. fire was so hot that it warped the tracks, and the train uh, went off the tracks, and oh. you know the rest oh, is unfortunate history. Um, you know, this is. Uh, you know, sort of crushing to a lot of Frankfurt people. You know, this beautiful facility was built. It's the, uh, uh, it's the, um, Frontenac. Okay. Frontenac, thank you. I'm drawing a blank here. Frontenac, a Royal Frontenac Hotel. So this is under construction. That's after construction, just next to the Ann Arbor Railroad Depot. In the background, you can see what used to be the old elevator. So it was, it was something, it was uh, built by the same railroad uh, and the same builder as the uh, um, Grand Hotel on Nacogdoches Island. And unfortunately, uh, it came to an end in uh, 1912. There's all kinds of urban legends about Frankfurt folks uh, rushing in and stealing the silver uh, before the fire finally took its toll. <laughs> and then the wave of guilt afterwards when they brought all of that stuff back. Um, yeah, I think there's still some out there. <laughs> oh, that's a fire in Lansing. Okay, uh, this is another fire, but um, I've always found this interesting. This is down in Manitou Beach, which is in south uh, eastern Michigan, Jackson area, uh, Brooklyn, Irish Hills. But what you see there is the building burned down, but it was an ice house, so the ice is still standing. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, if you're, I think you're probably catching on. I'm always looking for detail in, in the things that I'm researching, and I just find it very interesting, and people seem to as well. Uh, railroad wrecks, uh, uh, that's an Ann Arbor boat, the number four. Uh, had a, quite a history. Um, this is, uh, it flipped over, it wasn't properly loaded, so it turtled um, up in Manistee. Uh, later on, it ended up uh, being caught in um, a, a terrible storm in uh, the middle uh, teens and came to rest inside the harbor in Frankfurt, but it was, it was wrecked, it lost several railroad cars off the, off the rear end. And, uh, you know, devastating fires and bridges. So I'm going to whip through a few of these. Oh, well, there's uh, Travers. That's the fire at the... Um, uh, Bartet, Bruce? Hotel. Bartet Bruce? No, it's at the... Um, at the Opera House. Opera House. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. At the Opera House. Yeah. 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 Um, Gas stations are very collectible. I'm going to go through these, but they're, you know, they're just, they're a great view of another time. Of course, we're not going to see any get more gas stations apparently in the future, but there'll be recharging facilities. <laughs> This is one I like from Interlock, and um, you know I'm not sure if Sinclair Gas actually was associated with elephants, but this was right at uh, right at Interlock and Corners, so it would have been where Rick's Market was, or the, the you know the Blue Base Bookstore now. So 
different things. How are we doing on time? I think we're doing fine. Okay. Oh, no. Now, you know, there's history and then there's <laughs> entertainment. And people love to collect holiday cards. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd sprinkle in some, oh. some great oh. holiday views. I want um, it. I want it. Oh. Oh. And Keep in mind that you know there are, you know, there are <laughs> so many of these beautiful cards out there. <laughs> Halloween cards are particularly collectible. Um, I mean, the graphics are great and they're typically unusual. Um, Santa cards probably would be the second most collected and valuable. But um, not so much with Santa dressed in his traditional white uh, robe and or uh, red robe and white trim, but you know mauve and green and blue, you know things that are non-traditional seem to uh, be very popular. Oh, look at isn't that cute? That's great. Oh. oh. So I put a bunch of Halloweens in here because we're getting, you know, close to Halloween. So. <laughs> Jack-o'-lanes were originally Jack terms. Oh, I didn't know that. So a Santa, you know, I'm here Santa being used as an advertisement on a postcard. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, the uh, Celine Bank uh, hawking their deposits and letting you know who is involved that possibly is trustworthy from that community. Oh. I've always thought this was very interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, uh, it goes back to 1908. I'm not exactly sure that, you know, who came up with the idea of Santa sticking somebody up. Wow. And he's black. No, Yeah, it's just a, uh, like, it's just a, like a, yeah, like a robber's mask. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, back before refrigeration, everyone had ice boxes. You had to get your ice somewhere. Ninety cars a day out of Mall of Lake. There's an ice plant in Onekama. There's some of the workers from Onekama inside the inside the ice works. On Lake Orion Way. Uh, interiors, I happen to, well, I keep saying I love everything, but uh, I happen to really enjoy interiors. This happens to be an interior for the Smith & Hall store on, um, in Crescent, Michigan, in North Manitou. So Smith & Hall was a, a logging operation. They ran a logging railroad as well. Oh. Some Native American collectibles. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, that happens to be a Hiawatha performance. Um, for several years, it was a very popular venue on uh, up in Conway, just outside of Pelston or uh, Petoskey, I should say, uh, across the village. Uh, this happens to be some, uh, well, a, a Smith & Hall or White um, lumber company, uh, lum logging crew. You can see uh, there were some Native Americans here as well. I've always loved this. I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful shot of these Native American women and, uh, you know, in a studio shot on Mackinac Island. So this is photography as art, you know? I mean, this isn't your everyday collectible. These are truly um, um, artistic views taken by highly, uh, highly trained 
early <laughs> photographers. Uh, this happens to be a woman photographer um, out of uh, uh, Petoskey. And um, um, she took a whole series of, of these shots. I think there's uh, a total of 36 or 38 of them. Um, unfortunately, she came to a, um, a very bad end and died in a um, in an insane asylum in California. But um, people thought that in part it was due to her exposure to the chemicals used in the pho photography process. Like mad as a hatter. There were, uh, there's a long history of early photographers uh, being contaminated um, due to um, the chemicals that were used for the photo processing. And it's not unusual that we all grew up taking film to uh, drugstores. And the reason that drugstores uh, were synonymous with Kodak and, and photo reproduction is that at some point, someone with some knowledge of chemicals had to uh, try and figure out um, you know, how to handle these chemicals. And druggists were working at compounding medicines all the time. So it sort of fell on the drugstores to start uh, becoming photographic reproduction companies. <laughs> I still can't tell if this is a man or a woman, but I think it's a, I do believe it's a woman. So we've got oh, the shabby town, of course. Uh, this is a very famous Native American um, guide up in the torchlight chain. His name is Peter Marks. Um, this is sort of unusual from uh, Arcadia. Um, it's actually hanging um, um, Bismarck uh, during World War I in Apogee. This actually is a photographer's children. Uh, the photographer was William Sharp out of Frankfurt. So obviously he staged this uh, with his girls. Um, Coast Guard on Beaver Island. Cherry Hut. He's a representative of local you know, photographs, Northern Michigan. Barn raising. Oh, this happens to be Mr. Hull from Smith and Hall at that during a ball game out on uh, <laughs> North Manitou. So many of these photographs can be um, identified by the photographer that took them. There are little tricks to, well, it's not tricks, there are educated ways to, uh, to tell uh, through negative numbers or possibly having the um, negative sign by the photographer. But yeah, this is the, uh, the original downtown um, uh, gateway. I don't know. You can see. That's where you know, the library is now. This was pointing to 22. You know, both directions, and this is the welcome oh. to Frankfurt. Oh my. And this is a view of Frankfurt. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to be driving on the ice at the mouth of the flat, but apparently these people didn't have a problem with that. Uh, this is a great photograph. Uh, this is the first man to uh, soar across Lake Michigan. So uh, Frankfurt at one time held soaring events, and, and uh, uh, this man had, uh, I forget his last name, um, Alec. Yeah. Uh, the lady on the left is Frankfurt's first telephone operator. Wow. <coughs> Her name is Rose Finn. And what she's looking out on is Frankfurt's first sidewalk being built. Wow. So, you know, prior to that, it would have been a wood boardwalk. Yeah. There she is at work. Oh. 
can see uh, Rose Fine operator, 1899. Um, you've got some great views of the old Mission Lighthouse. Here's a nice one of uh, Point Betsy. Uh, this is a uh, this is actually a black and white photograph, but it was hand colored of the dunes looking out at South Manitou and North Manitou. The uh, uh, you know, the also bills. <coughs> oh, the Swastika Lounge, that, that's not what you think. <laughs> you know, the Swastika was a, a, was a, um, uh, it was actually a symbol of, of good luck and health yeah. at one time. Um, Duck Lake, if you know Interlochen, you know it's all built up with all types of wonderful cottages and properties, but at one time it held, uh, you know, this large uh, works. It was cooperage, uh, so they made uh, wood barrels for the agricultural industry for the most part. And uh, there's kitchen staff. You know, Interlochen with an actual downtown. <laughs> Uh, downtown Kalkaska. Um, that's an earlier fire. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Irishman and the Jew clothiers, but um, they were a very popular men's store. Um, they started in, in Kalkaska. Traverse City actually had a branch operation here. I shop there. Me too. <laughs> they were always carrying the real uh, Levi's jeans. Yes. <coughs> and they were across from the old penny store. Uh, yeah. And uh, it had a wooden floor when you went in, but it was where you got jeans if you're going to buy them. This is in the 1950s. The only right? place, really. The only place, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, th this it photo was. was so hard then. Yes. This photo was actually taken by Edward Beebe, a, a very, very collectible Kalkaska uh, County photographer. Uh, very prolific. Most of the stuff that he did was uh, was basically from like Lake City on up through Torch Lake. And the reason being that he was so identified in that territory is he didn't have an automobile. So he was going to his shoots in a horse and wagon. And um, so uh, this is one of the first photos he actually took and he took some interior shots of, of, uh, of the, um, uh, the clothing store and and the rest is history. Uh, now got some Leland shots. Go back. Okay, that's another sharp. I think it's a classic shot. A little bear like regatta. Um, these are actually some hunters here uh, on the peninsula. They are not identified. There's Brown Bridge Dam before it was built, before it was ripped down. So it was quite a construction project at the time. Uh, this is a lumber camp up Helston Way, Jackson and Kendall. There's uh, one of the crews, probably some of the uh, camp bosses. Possibly even Mr. Jackson or Tyndall himself. Uh, that's the soaring days in Frankfurt. There we go. Uh, we were talking about ghost towns earlier. Here's downtown Summit City. You know, you get a, a, there's probably a farmhouse and a sign. You know. Sutton's Bay. So, I think that's real cute for a holiday card. Uh, again, another Kalkaska uh, County photographer. There's a BB lumber camp. Traverse City Country Club back in the day. So, not exactly the bear. But, uh, 
Yeah, here's the beginning of a fire at, um, um, at uh, Woodworks on um, uh, Boardman Lake. Traverse City baseball team. This is the Traverse City Resorters. <laughs> what I really like is the photo bomb in the background. Oh, yeah. You can see the kids up there. But uh, yeah, their star player was uh, a Polish gentleman, and um, um, they needed to try and figure out a way to promote him, and they asked him to change his name to something more brief. And so he took the last name Brief. <laughs> so it was Bundy Brief. Wow. Oh my. Anybody remember All right, him? Oh, that's Don. I know him. Don, yes. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. Are we doing okay on time? Keep going. Okay. Yeah. yeah, since I haven't given this presentation before, uh, I'm just sort of floating by here. So. Uh, Jerry Parade, um, which you can see in the background there is the uh, candy company where um, uh, North Peak Brewery is. And right across the street from it is the new marijuana dispenser. <laughs> yeah, how many do we need? Um, uh, I like this shot. It's a 4th of July shot lighted downtown Traverse City. Um, if you take a look, there's a movie theater there. I forget the name of the movie theater, but directly next door to the movie theater uh, was an ice cream store. Yeah, I'm, because I deal with so much information, sometimes it gets you know, difficult to remember all the names. Uh, yeah, that's Front Street. Um, probably right around Mary's Kitchen Port, I think. No, Raph the Taylor was in the Masonic Building. So you're on Union Street here, Front Street yeah. is it off the left. Is it? Uh huh. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And you know that treasure. And that treasure too. I, I really enjoy this. You can see the uh, you can see the uh, lighthouse keeper having a discussion with uh, somebody. Um, you know, this would have been, uh, um, you know, a Rennie's camp, uh, you know, cutting wood for uh, Hannah Light's operation. People think this is the first brewery in Traverse City, but I've found that that's actually not the case. But this is the, considered to be the, the first brewery um, in Traverse, and it was located pretty much where the Haggerty Center is now. But uh, uh, I've got um, data that correlates to the very first brewery in Traverse City actually being uh, like a country house um, in uh, like Garrickville, I mean going just up that way, you know, not too far from where Apache Truck Grill is now. Oh, oh here's these gals, uh, that's Bowers Harbor. Um, they're, they're just arriving on that small steamer, which is right there, the Fanny Annum. <laughs> And you know that as a restaurant now. The Boathouse. The Boathouse. And you can see that uh, at this time, the store still had a gas pump up front. <coughs> and I was talking earlier about um, the dock. Yep. Cherry Loading Station at Old Mission. Oh my God. Yeah, this is, uh, this is towards the southern end of the peninsula. Um, I have uh, quite a body of stuff uh, given to me by a, a good friend. Um, and um, a lot of this farm property was down around Matheson Street. Uh, a little bit of railroad stuff. Oh, that guy's missing it, Yeah, yeah, another. 
you know, on, on another type of thing. Um, when I look at railroad shots, I'm always looking for actually, you know, actually the, you know, the engines, the railroad lights on the back, on the, on the box cars. Um, you know, it's always fun to see the milk cans all lined up because they'd have to go to the creamery somehow. So that would be, you know, two railroads crossing. That's called a witch's head, people. <laughs> no, it's actually not a pack, but what it is, is, um, you know, back in 1910, there was this this friction going on between the streetcar companies and the and the, the uh, car ferries to transport people up and down the Detroit River and across Lake St. Clair on up to the St. Clair River to Port Huron. Port Huron in that part of the state was uh, uh, was a great summer location, close enough to the Detroit area um, to um, you know get to work on a weekend but far enough away where it was sort of a resort, a resort environment. So what they're actually doing here is this is a tongue-in-cheek thing, you know, how, or, you know, some type of friction between the two companies that uh, they're using humor to diffuse it. Yeah, this could be a, a flood in, uh, in Flint. You don't see guys in kayaks very much on the main street. Oh, that happens to be a, a railroad on uh, Old Mission. Uh, not Old Mission, on uh, uh, North Manitou. North Manitou. Manitou. Right. Uh, this is called the Dummy Train um, down in Ludington area, Hamlin Lake, uh, Epworth, a big resort and religious uh, uh, Chautauqua kind of era. A vacation spot, and uh, so they had a train that ran, um, you know, back and forth from um, in, in the area of the lights to transport people to the different resorts. Yeah, uh, that'd be Mac, huh? Of course. Wow. Yeah, that's up in Dalston. <coughs> um, that happens to be an interior of a company store up in Springdale, mm -hmm. which is uh, Charlevoix County. Uh, Thompsonville also had uh, two different railroads crossing at one time. And people. And yeah, well, yeah. Thompsonville was quite a town. It was quite a town at one time. and. I live in Lake Ann, and there was a time when Lake Ann had population larger than Traverse City. So now there's 100. I think we've got 2,100 in the township. But um, yeah, White Cloud. Yep. Go full carts. Fire minute work. Oh. Yeah, so you've got Goble Brewing Company. So a lot of beer before Prohibition. Yeah. Uh, these guys are actually building the uh, Detroit River Liv Livingston Canal, which was necessary as the boats got bigger, you had to deepen and widen the Detroit River uh, to make it um, navigable. And uh, so, they're actually just getting ready to dynamite. Those boxes are filled with DuPont dynamite. Nice Charlevoix view. Doesn't look like Round Lake anymore. Another Charlevoix view. The inland route, um, you know, from uh, Sheboygan down to um, uh, Conway, really. And then you could jump on a, uh, on a wagon and go to Petoskey or Harbor Springs after, you know, traveling by boat across the inland route. 
Uh, a guy in the rigging. This is uh, again on uh, North Manitou. So you can actually see the, the lumber mills in the village of Crescent, and the long dock that's there. Uh, some of the dock is still underwater. Um, there's a, a local diver that takes some wonderful pictures uh, off of that area. Good. Are we done? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I forget what the last slide was. Well, population crashed and uh, the state allowed um, an upper peninsula license you could get three deer for 50 cents oh. 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 and I forget that the, the exact date of this but it's uh, it's, it's about called the Onekama and it, it uh, is actually returning at this point from the upper peninsula um, and it's a very famous shot um, uh, of course, it's not for everyone, but... Um, this one's 1898, so I don't want it hanging in my living room. Was it? The comment is 1898, December 5th. Oh, there we go. Yep. Um, some Frankfurt shipping shots. Oh, wow. Oh, there's that number four um, uh, after she sunk in the harbor there. There's a whole mural of that ship when they're losing the rail cars in the post office in Frankfurt. Yep, yeah, it was a, a Rosa era WPA um, painting. Mm -hmm. um, this again is off of the uh, North Vienna too. Wow. You know, uh, those guys in Leyland, you know, they, they uh, had some, <coughs> Some serious moxie to be getting out there in the wintertime mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm a Facebook friend with Bill Carlson, and uh, we trade a lot of stories about the history of, of you know, Leland and Leland's fishing fleet. Uh, it's one of the larger uh, DNC boats, Detroit and Cleveland boats. This is its maiden voyage. Uh, and uh, was sponsored by the Detroit Board of uh, um, Commerce. Yeah, a tug and, and a boat. Uh, here's a very early shot in Frankfurt of the number one. Um, uh, number one ended up burning in Manitowoc, <coughs> but uh, it was a wood hull carburetor. <laughs> And uh, that's Frankfurt in the background. If you'll notice, it's all logged off. Yeah. yeah. Some uh, uh, fire station shots are, are interesting. You know, there's some real first responder collectors, um, policemen, and as well as firemen. Uh, what I found interesting about this is I had to look up Loyalty Park because that's how I do things. And what I found was that was uh, actually a, a black. Uh, Ball week um, uh, stadium. So very early on, when you know um, black uh, players were allowed to play, in, you know, public spaces. And because 
This has been a dynamite presentation. <laughs> <laughs> this happens to be, you know, uh, a construction shop for me to speak. I want to thank you thank all. Thank you. Um, well, at this point, um, I'd be glad to fill some questions. Yeah. I've got a couple of postcards that I brought with me that are kind of unique, and I wondered what you thought of that. Sure. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give this a try. sort of a romance scenario um, and it, it had to and again I'm not that familiar with it but from what I understand it had to do more with women looking for a man and in some cultures that's the one day that a woman can ask a man to marry her is that what it is okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tuberculosis Society? Well, be, yeah, you know, that's all part of the whole Christmas seal uh, oh. fundraising scenario. Uh, you know, I, I've seen cards like this before with different personalities. So, um, you know, they probably were, you know, were a special, you know, they're the Beyonce of their time. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they, there was probably some some draw. They had a popular song or or, or, or something that you know helped with the uh, with either the donations or uh, it was a thank you possibly for a, a donation. That one I picked out because you really li you liked clear eyes, so I put that well, on my pile to show you. And I'm glad you, you know, you brought this because, you know, the thing about um, collecting photographs is not everything needs to be a disaster. Not everything needs to be a shipwreck. You know, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, these handsome children, um, the background scene? Is it a studio shot? Is it a candid shot? Was it taken in front of a Christmas tree? The ornaments on the Christmas tree? Uh, you know, a child in the embrace of their parent or their grandparent. I mean, there's just so many different things that, um, that I guess open you up to appreciation for the image or the history or you know, whatever it is that you're hoping to get um, out of postcards. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Don, is there much in terms of uh, postcard history from Idlewild? There is. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, there, there is, for those of you that aren't familiar with Idlewild, if we're talking about Idlewild, uh, the uh, Negro uh, resort era. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, because there are Idlewilds all over, you know, resorts yeah. and, and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, Idlewild <coughs> is located in the center of the state, uh, Baldwin area. Lake uh, County. Lake County, yeah. And it was, um, um, you know, I mean, back when there was the Green Book. Many of oh, you yeah. might have seen the movie, The Green Book, but, you know, there were, uh, you know, most resorts were restricted, and that's up here too. Um, um, and I'll get to your question in one second, but, you know, restricted resorts, Crystal Lake, 
beautiful, Beulah, wonderful. Um, but, you know, the most popular resort on Crystal Lake was the Northway. And the Northway was restricted. And it uh, wasn't just restricted against people of color, but um, even those darn Catholics with too many kids. I say that facetiously. But, you know, I, I mean, if you weren't the right fit for the resort, yeah. it wasn't an open environment. Mm -hmm. um, down the street, um, uh, there was a, another very nice uh, resort property called the Windermere, and the Windermere would um, allow people of Jewish faith mm -hmm. in, um, which, you know, well, didn't fit well with the Northway. I'm not picking on them, it's just, mm -hmm. this is all just mm -hmm. part of history. This is the kind of things you run into. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I don't think a, a great shot of the Northway with people diving off the high dive into Crystal Lake is, uh, you know, is something that I wouldn't collect because it, it, it is part of history. It's, it's part of the history of the county that I actually live in. But, um, uh, you know, I mean, that's just the, the nature of the beast. Um, but as far as Idlewild goes, I, there was, uh, there were uh, resort developments, um, there were seven were nightclubs, and lots of nightclubs. Uh, it originally started, uh, some, somebody bought a ton of property on uh, Paradise Lake, I think it is, and they split, uh, they, they split all this uh, property they bought up into 800 square foot lots. So just tiny little lots that um, uh, African Americans possibly could buy and have a place to get out of the city um, or, 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 or from wherever they lived. Uh, and it was a very, very popular spot. And um, I've never actually seen anything uh, negative regarding, you know, it. Uh, it eventually came to an end because the world sort of changed and things opened up. Um, I mean, when you, when you talk about um, African Americans, um, at one time, African American uh, postcards were very collectible, but they weren't collectible for maybe the reasons that you might think, okay? Um, most of the African American postcards that I've sold over the years, I've sold to African Americans. Most of the pinup cards I've sold, I've sold to women. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I don't sell nudie, you know, inappropriate things, but you know, some really classic, you know, pinup card. It, it's attractive to women. There was a th I used to sell postcards online, and there was a time when I couldn't sell my postcards um, that would have a black person in any kind of a negative way, like up a tree in Florida? It is still that way. Uh, uh, rules have been put in place for, for that type of thing, um, even if it seems like it's not, um, even trying to list cards like that nowadays are, are typically they get bounced. Um, Confederate flags, don't buy any Confederate flag postcard inventory. <laughs> Just before they put the hammer down on Confederate flags, I bought a whole collection of them. Oh. And, and again, just because they were part of history, you know, you got General Grant, you got General Lee, and you've got, you know, well, I finally sold them for nothing at a postcard show. But. Yes, sir. Um, what were the uh, business uh, dynamics and drivers behind the um, postcard industry in the early 20th century? Was it predominantly local? you know, small community businesses, or were there large companies with national distribution capabilities that sort of cornered the market? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, real photo postcards, which were taken by, you know, the real photo postcards are an actual real photo printed on photographic paper. That Typically, that was more of a cottage industry. So uh, Edward Beebe out of Kalkaska would be reproducing his cards. Uh, and sometimes they were, uh, you know, he'd take a shot of a family in front of their farm with their favorite horse, and there'd be six of them in the whole world. 
or sometimes it, you know it would be like the um, the um, the card with the Irishman and the Jew, you know, where they used them for advertising purposes, so they were more mass produced. Um, printed cards, um, printed cards, uh, they were more mass produced initially. Most of the printed cards came from Germany or England. And the reason being is um, Germany and England basically um, uh, had the printing technology for, for centuries before America was, you know, uh, the Industrial Revolution in America anyway. So a lot of those cards were reproduced overseas and then um, they became more common with American publishers. There's a company by the name Kurt Tech, I think that's how to pronounce it, um, who did well. During uh, World War II, they, they introduced white border cards because if you were gonna print something, it all went to the war effort. So, you know, you didn't wanna use as much ink on the card, so you started to see white borders on the card so that they would use less ink. Um, they also went with linen type cards um, and that meant they had a rag fiber in them which seemed to be a filler for, uh, rather than high quality uh, press bond paper that the cards were printed on. And then, um, you know, come the 1940s, most of those kind of cards went away and the color chrome cards started coming in. And then the, pretty much the end of the postcard era was in the 1960s because the size of the postcard changed from what is considered to be a standard size card to a four by six. And postcard collectors typically didn't uh, uh, collect four by six postcards even though they might be important to you where you vacationed or, or whatever, but they didn't fit in the photo albums. So that was sort of the end of the standard postcard era. Um, and uh, did that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. I've got a couple others. Yeah. You can come in on it, I'm interested. Sure. Thank <laughs> 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 That's cute. Everybody loves a cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> Almost everybody. Yeah, the dog is bigger than the first one. Yeah, well, it's a perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can try. You just uh, notice the person with the dark one. You can take that out of water. That's just a blue eye. Yeah, that might have been one that could have been hand colored uh, if you did want to put a blue eye. Now, this as a shot was is pretty typical. Uh, it would have been taken in a photo studio because it's got a photo background, uh, you know, versus a, an outdoor shot. It says it was in an arcade. Yeah. Okay. And then there, uh, there, there often were uh, photo studios set up in arcades when you know arcades were were a fun, you know, classic place to go. Um, One last question. Oh, good. Um, this is just a typical picture of the old mission lighthouse, but I wonder about the date because on the back it says uh, it's a one cent United States, mm -hmm. but then it says two cents for Canada, Mexico, or Cuba. Yeah. And, and plus, about what era would that have been? I just noticed that. Speaking of Cuba, you cannot uh, sell the Cuban stuff online anymore. Mm. Yeah, sort of like, you know. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? Sure. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, the one cent rate domestically uh, held in place with the exception of a couple of years where it was bumped to two, uh, pretty much through um, 1926. So, um, yeah, I just thought in a couple of them actually could go. Yeah.
Yeah, this card, mm -hmm. I would date this card probably around 1908. Maybe if you get this card, I just wanted to look at it. What do you think? Well, who would have thought that a simple postcard would tell so much history about who we are as a community, a nation, as a world? It's just amazing. Yeah. I want to thank Don. He's become a good friend to Peninsula Community Library. I want to thank Mary, who's done a fabulous job with our local history room. I know some of you grew up here, and as you're going through things and cleaning out, please be really careful. I know my own children don't want all the things that I treasure. So our concentration here is very much um, Old Mission Peninsula. If you find postcards or letters or photographs, um, call one of us. We really would like to see them, even if we can just make a digital copy of them. Don, thank you so much. We have a tiny yes. thank you for you. Oh.